Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. This is part one out of a three-part series on water. We all know that our plants need water to survive. Otherwise, this happens. But there's so much more to it. We need to know water's function within the plant. We need to know when to water and how to water to be able to make them thrive. So this series is divided into three parts. Why do we water? When do we water? And how do we water? So why do we water? Well, we all know that it's important for the plants. If we don't water, they will die. But there's so much more to it. We need to know the functions inside of the plant. If we understand the why, then we can better help our plants to thrive. Now, there are a lot of different functions that water has inside of the body of the plant. But there are three major functions that we think you need to know to be able to take care of your plants. Number one, water is the main transport system inside of the plant. Now, we humans, we have a heart that is pumping around the blood inside of our bodies. But plants doesn't have a heart. So how is the water moving inside of the plant? Well, this is through something called transpiration. And what is that? Now, let me explain. Now, as you can see, I'm an expert, not only in plants, but also in painting. <laughs> well, this is supposed to be a plant. And what happens here is that when we water our plants, we have a raised humidity and a wet surface in the soil here. So you have water for the roots. And what happens here is that water has an ability that we call cohesion or cohesion tension theory, which means that water molecules can actually bind themselves together like this. Now, what happens is that since we have water down here inside of the pot, uh, we will have a chain of water molecules all the way down from inside of the pot here that will lock on together through the roots, up into the stems, and all the way out to the leaves. Now these are all locked together in a chain. Now, mainly on the underside of the leaf, on the underside here, we have something called stomatas. Now stomatas are small, we can call them small windows that can open and close. Now what happens is that when the stomatas are open, some of these water molecules will actually evaporate or transpire out into the air. And this long, long chain here is affected by that evaporation or that transpiration. So when one molecule says, poof, it evaporates out to the air, another molecule will add on to that chain because all of the chain here is actually moving inside of the plant. And we have a lot of these chains inside of the plant. This is the transport system within the plant, and it's all water. Just to be as precise as I can here, this chain of water is in every part of the roots, in every part of the stem, in every part of the leaves here. So this transpiration is going on all the time. So molecules are evaporating from the leaves and locking on to the roots. And you have these chains that are there all the time, as long as you water, of course. Because what happens if you start wa stop watering a plant and the soil goes dry here, that evaporation cannot take place. And you get a break in this chain. And that is really, really important for the plant. Now, this transport system has functions of, the, of its own. Now, there are three main functions. One of the most important ones is actually cooling. It's regulating the heat within the plant. 
And it's doing that because water has the ability to retain heat. So you have cooler water that is locking onto these chains of water down here, and then it's moving inside of the plot. And the water is actually absorbing heat or retaining heat. And when it evaporates or transpires through the stomatas, it's releasing that heat. So it has a cooling effect of the plot. Actually, 85% of all the water that you give to your plant is used to regulate the heat for the plant. Another thing that the transport system is moving within the plant is nutrients. Now, that it could be that you have given your plant fertilizer and its nutrients in that form. It can also be nutrients that are already there inside of the soil. But the water's transport system here is moving those nutrients within the plant. And that is also a very, very important function. Now, the last but not the least is, of course, water itself. What I mean by that is all of these small chains within the plant, and like I said, there are hundreds or thousands of these small molecule chains of water. They're actually also the backbone of the entire plant. It is what keeps the plant from standing up. So when you're not watering, watering your plant and you see that they are drooping a little bit, it's actually because these chains are being broken and the plant is starting to fall or starting to droop. And in somewhere in between 90 and 95% of the entire plant is actually built up by water. And that is the backbone which keeps the plant standing. Now the second important function that water has inside of our plants is growing new plant material. Now there is a big misconception that the fertilizer you give your plants, that that is the food for the plant. It's not. It's actually a form of supplement that helps different functions within, within the plant. But food for the plant is actually created by the plant itself. And it's created through something called photosynthesis. Now, if it's been a while since you were back in school, just sit down and relax. We'll take the formula here. What we need to create the food for the plant is that we need sunlight or energy. Now, energy plus water plus carbon dioxide will lead to something called C6H12O6. And what is this? Well, this is the food for the plant. This is glucose. Another way of saying sugar. And this glucose is the food for the plant. And if we take a look at this formula here, we actually have one very, very important ingredient. If we don't have water for our plants, it cannot create glucose and it cannot grow. So if we re remove water from our plants, this is what happens. We will not get new growth material. So the third big function that water has inside of the plants actually has to do with gas exchange. Because if we, as we can see here, we need carbon dioxide to create this glucose. And water actually has an important function even here. Because if this is one of our leaves, like this, one big leaf here, on that leaf, we said before that we have something called stomatas. Now, stomatas are small windows that are opening and closing. If we take a look a little deeper on how they look, they look something like this. This is an open stomata. And as you can see here, it actually is formed by two almost banana-shaped structures. And those structures are filled with water. So when you have water going out to the stomata here, it opens. 
And it's through the stomatas here that we have the water molecules as well that are going to start to evaporate or transpire. But when that happens, you also have a gas exchange. The leaf here is actually absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. So to complete this here, we also have, we have glucose that is created from photosynthesis plus oxygen. So the stomatas here are absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. Now, if the plant doesn't have water, what will happen is that these stomatas will start to close. And this is actually a way, it's a good way in a way because if it feels that I don't have enough water, when the stomatas close, you have less water that evaporates. It can keep the water that it has within the plant. But you do not have the gas exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So when we take away the water and the stomatas close here, we do not have carbon dioxide. So water also has an impact on this. And if we lose water, we lose even more of that glucose and we take away its ability to grow. Now, different species of plants can handle this very differently. Some species can close the stomatas and stop this transpiration and stop the creating of new plant material for a very long period of time while other species actually needs this transpiration all the time to function properly. And we'll get into that more in the next episode when we talk about when should we water. So I hope now you have a better understanding on why we water our plants. Mm -hmm. now, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now until next time, hi dog.